I wanted to write a book about filmmaking, partly because I know a certain amount of people who are involved in the movies, but also because I tend to think quite busily when I'm writing. Um, it's as though I'm seeing what I'm writing on a cinema screen. So the world of the movies seemed rather a good background for a book. Then the immediate trigger was seeing a group of film students shooting a scene in which a girl in a red dress was standing in the rain. And that really was the seed from which the book grew. I'm drawn to the South for the same reason that millions of people are, for the, for the sensuality of life, for the fabulous surface glitter, for the heat and the light and the perfumed air and the smell of herbs, that thing that hits you when you get off the aeroplane. But there is something more, both in Liminal and in um, Floating at the Funeral. What I wanted was intensity, but not necessarily clarity, because they're not the same thing. So I think in that, in that intense experience of life that you get in Southern Europe, there is a hallucinatory quality, a sense that there's a mystery that isn't properly understood. My first answer is that in order to write you have to find an empty space in your head and that's where you write, that's what you write in. But it's fantastic if that empty space, that internal empty space, is mirrored and reflected in the real world. That a, a place that has a door that you can open, go through and shut behind you. And I've been very lucky in that um, friends and family have lent me wonderful places to work in over, over a, a number of years. And in particular, one in London and one in Dieppe, in, in Normandy. And for me, that's the perfect writing environment. You're alone, but not isolated. You work all day, nobody interrupts you. And in the evening, you're surrounded by people. You wander out and you have a pint in London or a pastis in Dieppe. And you simply lean back and watch the world go by. I could write you a list of my 10 favourite authors on a Monday and I would write a different list of another 10 authors on Tuesday. But what I can say is that while I was writing Flirting at the Funeral, there were three books that came to mind quite often. The first of these was Giorgio Bassani's wonderful novel, The Garden of the Finci, Finci Contini's, which is a story about regret and about loss and lost opportunities and above all about not being quite brave enough. The second is The Great Gatsby, just if for nothing else, for the beautiful, luminous musicality of his Fitzgerald's prose. And the third, maybe the most important, is Emile Zola's Nana. Nana is a story about a courtesan in Paris in the 1860s. And it has this wonderfully vivid, intense atmosphere of contrast between wealth and squalor, between glamour and disease. And I think it's a story for our times in a way that was unimaginable in the optimistic days of 20 or 30 years ago. I'm working on a novel which is based on the life of the Roman poet Ovid, but I brought it into the present day. Ovid was the most successful poet of his generation. He wrote glittering erotic satires, he mixed with the elites of Roman society, he was a superstar. And then for reasons which had been lost to history, he fell out of favour and he was banished to a place called Thomas on the Black Sea, on the very edge of the Roman Empire, a place of which he famously said, beyond here lies nothing. So I'm going to write a modern version of his story and I've been thinking of calling it Vodka, Depression and Tomazepam. But I might settle for a more upbeat title. in that brightness, in that light, um, in a way that it isn't blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the right, which is simply an empty space in your head. But what is much better... <laughs>